Um, so uh, we've been trivia for about 15 hours now, and I thought it was time to have a bit of fun with what we're doing and play around with some of the things we're announced today. And that means that I'm going to be doing some live coding. At least it seemed like a really great idea when we were going through the content planning over the last couple of months. Uh, but anyway, it's time to get cracking. I'm going to start by sharing my screen. And we'll jump over to my VS Code instance here. Now, I'm running just um, the VS Code in Starter Builds with a couple of extensions. And I wanted to try and, and build an application using the new Azure Static Web Apps that was announced this morning or this afternoon, depending on what time zone you're in. Um, so what I've got here is I, I have set up a few of the things already because I didn't want you to sit here and watch me install like dozens and dozens of node modules. Um, but I have the, the skeleton of it set up and running. That just collapse away the little Teams window down there. Um, so the idea behind this application is that I'm going to be building something that will be doing a, like a little trivia application. So you can test your, um, your basic knowledge so that when we're able to go back out and go to uh, Pub Trivia Night, we're ready to go. So I'm going to get started by uh, creating a GraphQL endpoint inside of the functions that uh, are being deployed in Azure Static Web Apps. And this is where I use the tr magic trick of copy and paste and put this into a file I've already created called schema.graphql. Uh, so inside of this, I'm defining a bunch of different data models that I have. So an answer, a player, question, and some other things that I'm going to need to represent. The interesting stuff comes down here at the bottom where I'm defining the schema that I'm actually going to be exposing from this GraphQL endpoint. I have a query, which is the things that I can use as a get operation to pull data down. And then I have some mutations where I can change data back on the server. Now, to do that, I actually have to implement some resolvers for this. So we'll get started by using our uh, Azure functions. And I'm using a GraphQL implementation from Apollo. Apollo has a really nice integration point with Azure Functions, and I install that from the Apollo Server Azure Functions integration point. Um, I've imported some other things, such as the GraphQL import, so I can download, I can pull that schema file in from the file I've got on disk, and then it can be exposed out um, with GraphQL. And then I have an object called resolvers, and these resolvers are what I am going to be doing to implement the functionality that I've got behind the scenes. So let's jump over to that resolvers file, and we'll open it up. And I've scaled out again some of the basic stuff. You don't need to watch me type every single character in here. Um, instead, let's start off with how we're going to represent our data model. Well, basically, I, I need to create some TypeScript types because I thought, well, why make it simple on myself and just play around with the looseness of JavaScript? Instead, I'll go down the route of using TypeScript so I can get some strong, strongly typed models here. Uh, also, I prefer to have strongly typed um, operations because I have like my background is um, is like .NET programming, and I'm used to having a type system. And TypeScript does a great example of bringing that into a JavaScript landscape. So to do that, I'm going to need a new function called types, where I'm going to define these types that I'll expose. So let's start off by going new file, and we go new file here, and we'll call that types.ts. And that's going to be our um, empty type here. And I'm going to also copy in the types that represented from an example implementation I've done. Boom. This live coding thing is so easy. I don't know what people are complaining about on things like Twitch and stuff like that. You know, it's so hard to do live coding. Yeah, you just copy and paste it from uh, the magic of television. Uh, anyway, these types that I'm exposing are basically just a TypeScript represent representation of this the GraphQL schema. So I have my player, my answers, um, questions, state, etc. Um, but I don't have to model out the queries and operations that I've got with inside of the schema because they're going to be uh, intrinsically um, typed based off of the way that I'm returning things out of those functions. Let's start off with our schema and we'll have a look at these first two operations. Get quiz, uh, quiz and we pass in an ID or quizzes where we just return a list of all the quizzes. Now, the point of that is that uh, if I want to be able to get a particular quiz, I provide it with the ID and I can um, get that response. And if I wanted to get a list of all the quizzes, this might be something you'd use in an admin um, portal. Um, I can get that as well. So we'll come back over to our resolvers, scroll down a little bit, and you'll see here I have actually scaffolded these out. And we'll start with quiz. And for this, I'm just going to do uh, const quiz equals quizzes. So I'm just using an in-memory data collection. Uh, it's just an array, um, but in a production application, you'd probably want to use something like Cosmos DB as storing as the back end of that. And we'll do a find uh, q, q.id, so that's the quiz, and then we'll use the ID that got passed in. And then if there wasn't a quiz, quiz, because it was an actual return from um, the collection, or like I've provided an invalid ID, I'm just going to throw a new validation, validation error. Uh, quiz does not exist. 
So this is going to be returned back out from our GraphQL API and make it sort of useful for us to, to understand um, in the response, and we can unpack that and do appropriate error handling. Now, assuming it does exist, we'll just return quiz. There we go. And then for quizzes, I'm just going to return that whole array, return quizzes, hit save, and now we'll jump over to our terminal. And I'm going to start this up. So I've got the, the Windows Terminal uh, application installed. Uh, we've got the, the 1.0 release that came out this morning. And I'm using WSL2 to do this. Um, I've got some customizations to my WSL2. Uh, you can see that I've got like a bit of status information running across the bottom. I've also got a custom background uh, there with a little terminal icon. And I wanted to bring some of the build color theming into it. So I've got that uh, a lovely bit of purple on there. So here in the uh, right-hand panel, I've got uh, the folder for uh, my Azure functions for the API backend. And we'll do an npm start. It's going to fire that up, um, and just as though you would do a normal Azure functions, it'll um, kick off the npm func, uh, sorry, the, the func uh, command, get that all up and running. It's doing a TypeScript compilation because obviously it's a TypeScript application, and we're going to need to do that. And then Azure functions will start up. We'll see that ASCII lightning bolt in just a moment um, as my machine slowly, slowly warms up. But on the left-hand side of the, the split terminal, I also have my uh, uh, the, the web uh, portal of it, so the, the UI application. So let's just jump over and have a look at what that looks like. So we can grab the URL of uh, localhost uh, 3000. That's where it's running at. Pop that up into the browser. Oops, I already had it open. And the magic of preparing a demo is I have stuff there uh, in um, a pre-existing scenario. So here we go. It's just a create React application. Um, React's my preferred um, web front end. But if you're using static web apps, you don't need to use a specifically a specific UI framework like React or Vue or Svelte or Angular or anything like that. You can even just do vanilla JS and um, plain old HTML and CSS without any sort of preprocessors. It's, it's just that flexible for you. Anyway, let's pop over here and we'll see that it's taking a little bit longer than I would like. Oh, there, there we go. We're kicking off our Azure functions. Um, maybe while that's running in the background, we'll continue on with what our code needs to do before we can hit our GraphQL endpoint. Or is it going? Looks like it is. Anyway, we'll come back here uh, and think about what we need to do. Well, we probably want a way that we can create our quiz, so get started in the application. You'll see that I actually wrote that bit of code here. And because I'm not smart enough to have written a, a good variety of quiz questions, I'm actually using an, uh, a publicly available uh, API endpoint called the Open Trivia Database. Um, that's opentdb.com. Uh, and I'm able to query on that. I just set it up so it's going to query only IT questions. And uh, we get kind of a, a limit of 10. You know, I don't want to have a too long and too hard a quiz. So it's going to get um, that information back for us. Uh, I'm then generating an ID for that quiz. I've got a little function that will just create a short code for it. Um, that's going to be the ID of your quiz. And so you can log in and you can check your results. And then I'm creating a data model um, by that quiz type that I have uh, defined in my TypeScript types, which is the ID. Um, currently, there's no players uh, assigned when you first create the quiz. I'm setting up the state and mapping the questions into there so that I can see what questions are associated with the quiz. Pop it into our array, and it's good to go. And let's check back over here. Looks like uh, Azure Functions is up and running. So because this is running GraphQL, I can go localhost uh, 7071, which is where Azure Functions renders, and I can hit the GraphQL playground, which is really cool. I, this is just exposed out from um, Azure Functions as normal. And I realized that I did forget one step along the way, which is uh, to use the Apollo um, response, uh, Apollo Azure Functions. Uh, I need to return the result not through the um, out parameter on a variable, but instead we need to do dollars return. Whoops, if I can spell return, there we go. We'll hit that. Azure Functions has restarted. We'll reload, and we should get the GraphQL playground. So I can write my queries and test stuff out here. It's a good way to kind of sanity check um, the way that I'm interacting or the way that I'm building stuff. Excellent. And you'll see here, I was playing around with it earlier, um, and you'll see that uh, there's a sample um, query that I've, uh, I've written up. OK. But our UI doesn't have any way for me to start the quiz. Like That's kind of the first thing that I probably want to be doing. So let's come in here, and we're going to oops, come over to the application. And I'm going to jump down to the source folder. So this is where uh, my code base will live. I'm going to grab the app.ts uh, app .ts file, and I need to start replacing this with some additional code. Again, we're going to do the magic of cinema, and I'm going to copy and paste some stuff from before. And we'll see all the sorts of things that we're going to end up in here. I'll talk about what we've got uh, along the way. 
So I've got a couple of um, uh, files that I'm going to need to create and to import. And I realized that you are going to get to see the uh, to get to see npm install because I forgot to include one of my dependencies earlier today when I was setting up this repo, uh, which is React Router DOM. I want to have this as a single page application where I can navigate through various steps. So I'm going to use uh, a React um, routing framework, and React Router DOM is the one that will do there. So let's drop over to the terminal. I'm going to split it again, and we'll come into that folder once uh, my terminal fires up properly. Uh, there's some things you can't get in editing. This is what I was talking about with uh, Lars and Marita a little bit earlier on in how you do online content presentations, is you've got a plan for when things don't go quite the way that you were hoping. So right, we'll do that, npm install dash d, and then we're going to paste that one in there. So that's our dependency that we've got to install, and install it as a standard dependency. Hit enter, and we'll leave that running in the background. Now, uh, as I said, I've got a couple other files that I need to create, which is the different rounds, which is the create, play, start, and complete. We'll set them up in just a second. Um, the next thing I've got is I need a way to access the, the API and make sure that I can um, uh, render it appropriately with inside of my application. Uh, what you'll see is that I'm doing an API host and checking the node environment. Now, when we're running locally, uh, I have to start up two processes, one for the web application and one for our uh, API backend. The API backend is running on a separate port. I can't have two processes running on the exact same port. So what I'm doing here, if I just move my cursor down a little bit, is I'm checking to see if I'm on my local environment. And if I am on my local environment, I'm going to say that the host API is with the port number in there. But in production, I'm not doing that. Because when we deploy a static website using uh, the Azure Static Apps, we also stand up those APIs on the same um, URL that you're on. We do some magic in the background so that you don't have to worry about port mappings or anything like that, uh, so that you don't have to set up cores and it's just treated as per normal. So that's what that's doing at the back. Now, the next thing I need to do is create a way that I can access my GraphQL endpoint through a bunch of React components. Now, I'm doing that with the Apollo client. Um, so I'm just setting up, here's the connection that you need to get to our Apollo client, our GraphQL backend. And then I'm using a React context to provide that down. And then I can use React hooks later on in the code base. And then setting up the React router with all the different routes that I'm going to hit. Start, play, complete, uh, and the default um, application uh, point there. So let's just check, excellent, npm install has completed. Uh, so that will get rid of one of these dependencies up here. Oh, got to also install the TypeScript definitions for it. So we'll go at, at, oh, at types. See, this is why I copy and paste everything, because it looks so much smoother. Uh, you don't have to watch me fumble around typing a simple word like type. All right, that'll, again, install in the background. And let's create a few more new files. Oops, uh, wrong keyboard shortcut. There we go. Uh, we got new file. I need one called create.tsx. And then we're going to create a new one after that called play.tsx. And what was the last one that we, uh, the last two that we had there? We need start and complete. So we go start tsx and finally complete.tsx. If I hit that fast enough, complete. Oh, whoops, there we go. Missed a typing. So let's just click here, new file, complete.tsx. Excellent. Now I'm going to just scaffold it out. Um, what each of these files look like, because otherwise it's going to start giving me um, continual TypeScript uh, errors. So we'll import React, React from React, and then we're going to return uh, const. Uh, this is complete equals that, and we'll return a whoops a just a, a return a div and div, and inside of that we'll put a h h1, and we'll say Game over. And let's just copy and paste this. And then we'll export default complete so that we export that out as a module available for uh, other parts of our code base. And then we'll jump over and we'll just drop this into start. And we'll say start a new game. Start a new game. And where we're going to go create. We go. Up here, F2 to uh, rename that, complete. And, uh, whoops, sorry, that was, that was create. I'm forgetting where I'm at in the code base. So we go create, and we go create a game, and then finally into play, and, whoops, play, and we'll say it's time to play a game. It's 
Time to play a game. Excellent. Okay, so fingers crossed. Now our TypeScript application should compile. If it uh, detects that I have installed those types correctly, Nope, I didn't. Let's have a look. What did I stuff up? Uh, come down here, Control B, scroll up. Um, hmm, okay, so I have seen some issue with that TypeScript definition. That's all good. We will look at that in just a moment. I will go back to my notes easily enough and have a look at that. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Talk amongst yourselves on the live stream there. Um, ask me some questions. Throw some heckles out on uh, on everywhere because there's nothing that uh, makes someone feel really confident when they're presenting going, ha, ah, nothing's going wrong, nothing, it's fine. And then you find out that there is a massive live stream of heckles in the background. Uh, come down here, npm install dash d, and we'll pop in that one. We'll see if that will uh, properly install this time. I think I just had a typo in, I think I did type, not types. Uh, and this is actually one of the really difficult things that I find when you're doing um, live streaming and like presenting remotely. Again, going back to the, the conversation that I had with um, Lars and Rita is that you don't really get that audience feedback, so you're not quite sure how successful you're being or you don't have someone going, you've missed the semicolon in the background, which I, I always uh, find that feedback from the audience to be quite useful. Okay, so excellent. NPM install is going in the background. Um, and then again, this stuff is just slowly winding up, so we'll quickly go on and start building out our, uh, our uh, let's see, our create game point here. So we need to implement this one here, and I'm going to, again, come over and just copy and paste code because it's easier to, it's, I find it's more useful to be able to talk about the code than just to watch someone type it out, particularly when you set yourself a challenge of being able to do this application in 30 minutes. You know, I, I might have been a little bit ambitious to be able to write this from scratch. Uh, so what I've got here is the, um, the React application. And inside of it, I've got a couple of dependencies. I'm using some standard React hooks, use state and use effect, so that I can set up some variables that I need to be able to track while the component re-renders, and some effects which I want happening when um, state changes with inside of my component. I'm then pulling in uh, a, really new, a really new fascinating one that we can use with um, our um, uh, GraphQL integration, which is use mutation. Okay, and this is from an Apollo package, Apollo slash React hooks. And what that allows me to do is create a GraphQL query that I can then pass across with the appropriate variables and set up a, uh, a new game, because that's what this one's doing, but it could be for any sort of uh, data change that I'm doing, updating existing data or creating new data. So here we have our state that we're setting up, um, and it's just indicating the mode that we're in, whether we're creating um, or not creating. So just to like put a spinner up on screen or something like that. Uh, I'm getting history so that I can do um, navigation. I'm getting that from the React router DOM. And then here is how we use that use mutation. So I'm providing it with a GraphQL query that I've created up here. Uh, I also have some GraphQL integration in VS Code, so I could execute this um, if I set up some other uh, variables inside of my config so that it knew where that endpoint existed at. And this is how the, um, the create would work. And then the response of that, I only want the ID property from the quiz that's been created. It returns me a full quiz, but I really only care about, a, uh, about the ID. I don't, I'm not interested in the questions and, and things like that. I will get those on the next screen. So with the effect that I've set up, when we go into a creating state, so when the button is clicked, uh, we're going to call that create game react hook from the use mutation. And then finally, we're going to um, have another effect that if we do actually get the data back successfully, we'll then navigate across using the history um, from the use history hook inside of our React Router. Whoops. Ah, excellent. It looks like our application is back up. So let's, uh, so this is what uh, we now get to see uh, when I've set that up. Now, if I hit F12 here and bring up the dev tools, let's just pin these to the side. Whoops, I'm going to pin those to the other side because I'm more of like a, a, left, a right hand side uh, pin than a left hand side pin. Uh, just collapse that down a little bit. There we go. I just on the network tab to show you what's happening with our uh, React application. So I'm going to hit let's do this, and that's going to go away and set things up. And I realize that something else has possibly crashed. Whoops. Because my function endpoint didn't work. Hmm. Interesting. Again, nothing like live coding. All right, we'll come back here. Uh, GraphQL Playground is up and running. And then we failed to fetch on that, which means that, oh, I know why that happened. 
because I'm running these on two separate ports, I'm not, uh, I have to set up calls on this. And we'll see that as a cause error response um, inside of here because I haven't set that up. And that's an easy fix. I'm just going to come over to my Azure Functions, terminate that, flip over to the uh, right thing, and we'll go to local settings. Oh, I don't have a local settings there, right? Uh, inside of here, I need to instruct Azure Functions that I want to enable cores. I'm just going to be a little bit cheeky and put this on our uh, on every request that comes in because this is only local host, and this local settings.json file is only relevant for things that are local host. So let's npm start on our Azure Functions again. That'll kick off in a moment. It's got to do a recompilation with our TypeScript code, so that'll be going shortly. So while that's happening, let's go on to the next screen that we'd have after we click uh, Create, and that will be the Start screen, because we can see here we're navigating to Start and to the ID of the quiz. So again, I'm going to just copy and paste some code. If I can get to it, here we go. We'll come to Start.tsx, pop this in, replace what we already had. See, Azure Functions is nearly up and running. And we'll have a look at what's happening here. Now, here we've actually got two different forms of a GraphQL query happening. The first is add player, so that we can add a player to the game. Now, the way that this game is designed is we could actually have multiple players. Now, we're not going to implement multiplayer support, but that's something that you as a viewer could try out yourself after the fact. So that's where add player comes in. We can add multiple players to the game. And then finally, we have our start quiz, which allows us to download, again, all of that quiz information. Um, and here, I've only got it getting um, uh, just the ID back again. Uh, we'll have a look at how that works. I just kind of wanted to show off the, um, oh, sorry, it's a, that's another mutation that allows us to, to actually kick off the, the quiz itself. Um, so this could be maybe a separate button wire up. But again, I'm only doing single player, um, but with the opportunity to expand it to multiplayer. Uh, we've got a number of different um, uh, effect, uh, hooks that are here. One which is used params, that comes in from React Router again, and that allows me to access the, uh, the segments of the URL, such as the quiz ID out of there, so I can pass that into the GraphQL queries. And again, we're using history so that I can do navigation events. We've got some local state, we've got some um, and the things that are happening there, and that's all easy enough for us to kick off some effects, but really we want to see this in action in just a moment. All righty. So, Let's reload our application, make sure that everything is up, clean, and dandy. Hit let's do this, and we'll see the GraphQL uh, execution is happening in the background. Fantastic. I can click on this, have a look at a preview, and we can see the response that's come back from our GraphQL endpoint. If I was to come over to the GraphQL playground and do a query against the uh, quizzes, we'll see that we already have a quiz now in our data. It has an ID, currently has zero players attached, which is what we expect. We haven't added ourselves to the game. I'm going to join the game, case my name properly, hit join game. Again, we see a bunch of endpoints uh, fire off, and uh, it's naturally fallen over because we haven't got to uh, implementing the add player. Oopsies, we should probably come back and do that. So in our code base, we'll come back to our resolvers, and inside of here, scroll down, and we'll see, oh, there's an add player endpoint that I've hit, but it doesn't actually do anything yet. So we probably need to make that work. And that's why we've fallen over when we've gone to our next step, is because I've returned no data. I'm going to, again, sneakily copy and paste some code. And you're probably going to get sick of hearing me say, I'm just going to copy and paste the code. And like, I thought I was signing up for a live coding session. But again, it's easier to do this and talk about the code than it is to try and talk and type it all out. So let's grab this. We'll paste it in. We'll have a look at what we're doing. Again, we're doing that function to see if the quiz does exist, and if it doesn't, raise an error. And then if the game state is also not in accepting new players, well, we're going to raise a different error because you know, we can't add players to an existing game. That would be kind of cheating because you know, what would your answers be if you hadn't been able to answer the question? Uh, we're going to generate an ID for that player, and we're going to add them to the player's um, collection off our quiz, and then we're going to return that player back down to the endpoint. That's going to have restarted our Azure function, and because of that, we will have lost all the uh, Game data, we'll see here if we get quizzes, we'll see that our quiz has got, because we're just keeping this in memory. Again, I'm just doing that for brevity's sake, but you'd probably want to do this somewhere, something different in a production environment. So we're going to start the game, we'll hit Aaron, go join game, and fantastic, we're able to start and connect in. We'll see if we do our query. Excellent, I've joined the game, and now it's time to uh, set up so that we can actually answer the questions. Come back to our code, and we'll come over to the next, end, uh, next point which, oops, uh, so this is play, and we're going to need to get the code for that, uh, play.tsx, 
And it's probably the most complex of the routes uh, and the uses of hooks that we've got with inside of our application. The way that this works is that it's going to just continually, it's going to get all of the, the um, responses back from uh, the questions that are uh, there, and it's going to slowly um, present them out to you every 30 seconds. And if you answer the question earlier, you move on to the next question sooner rather than later. So for that, I'm going to use a custom hook, which is called set interval, which if I create a new file, there is set, whoops, I keep hitting the wrong keyboard shortcut when I want to create a new file. A new file, and we'll call this set, uh, use interval, use interval.ts. And I'm also going to create a utilities because no code base would be complete without having a file called utilities. Utils.ts. Now, let's grab first off our use interval, and we'll see that what this is doing. Back to the right file. Now, the way that uh, this works is that um, for the um, application to work, I, I kind of need to have it um, uh, polling every 30 seconds, which is what you would use set interval, interval in uh, a React code base or in a JavaScript code base, sorry. Uh, but React Hooks doesn't work particularly well with that. So this is a bit of code written by uh, one of the authors of React uh, from Facebook, Dan Abramov, and he has just an explanation around how you do uh, set interval and use that as a React hook. And then finally, we need to grab our utils code base. And this is just a little um, snippet that I need to uh, return unescaped HTML because um, we want to make sure that the questions are rendered properly, even if they've got ampersands or uh, they've got HTML tags in them. We don't want that all, of ex all escaped. Let's come back to play. Now, this time we've got a query as well as a mutation happening with inside of our GraphQL endpoint. So query to get back the quiz details from uh, the ID that we've got passed in, and then ability to answer the questions. I'll see some hooks that are set up here. We've got um, uh, the state of like how long's left, um, and that's going to be 30 seconds as the initial starting point, and that will just slowly count down. Um, we've got our history again. Uh, we've got the current answer because I need to be able to enter information to the form. So we'll type in the answer in that field, and then uh, we have some other state, current questions, et cetera, et cetera. Now I need to be able to load this up. So there we go. It's already it's already started because I've got a hot reload running, and you'll see here's the first question, uh, and it's been slowly ticking down. But before I do that, I need to actually implement an ability to answer the questions. And we're nearly out of time, so I probably won't get to finish finishing this and deploying it onto um, static, Azure Static Web Apps. But I've already actually done that uh, for us. So let me jump over to the Azure portal uh, and make sure that that's signed in because that would have been a, a very that's a very Bad start to the demo if I don't have uh, my Azure portal signed in, uh, which I don't. So let's quickly jump into that. Okay, uh, there's nothing like uh, sign in dancers. Awesome. Um, it has fully signed me out. That's a little bit annoying. Uh, let's jump over to one of my other profiles, see if that's going to be signed in. Portal, let's go Azure here. I have multiple uh, accounts signed into my machine simultaneously, so I have to swap between them. And unfortunately, sometimes it signs them out at really inopportune moments, such as when I'm trying to do a live demo like this. Here we go. Uh, we will jump through to my live coding backup. As I, I did this earlier, and I wanted to make sure it would actually work. I will see it here is being deployed through um, Azure Static Apps. Uh, we're going to actually have a couple of sessions on the build live stream tomorrow, where I'm going to be talking to some of the product uh, folk that uh, brought this uh, to fruition. And then I'm going to have one of our MVPs here in APAC join me to talk about um, their experience as a front end web developer and uh, working with Azure Static Apps. So we'll just pop it open and we'll see here's the, the game that's running in the background. We got to create a new game. I'm going to join it in a minute while that happens. Let's just have a look at what it looks like in the Git repo as well. That's spinning up. Um, oh, that's right. I'm not signed in. So open up this one as GitHub. So many computers, so many profiles. This is what it takes to run a live stream such as this. So this is what happens when you deploy an application using Azure Static Web Apps, is we end up with a GitHub action that's created for us. Inside of that, there are a couple of uh, action endpoints that are, uh, sorry, a couple of different jobs that are set up. The first is going to be on build and deploy. So here we go. We can do um, uh, on push or on pull request. Uh, again, check out the sessions. There's one at 11 a.m. Uh, Australian Eastern Standard Time where we'll actually be going deep dive into building applications using Azure Static Web Apps. Um, and you'll learn a bit more about things like these pull requests and push and like how those different scenarios can be played out. Uh, and then the most important thing is 
this um, GitHub action that's going to run. We provide it with some secrets to connect to Azure and connect to the um, GitHub repo. It's going to upload that, and then we provide it with the information of where it's going to find that source code. It will go up, and your application will deploy, just as this one here. And let's join in, and we'll see how quickly I can get 30 answers incorrect. Uh, it's because uh, I always get different questions each time. Ooh, what was the main CPU of a Sega Mega Drive slash Sega Genesis? That one is definitely not something I know, so I'm going to just randomly click buttons and hope it's all good. Uh, but I believe that we're out of time uh, on this stream, so I will make the code available for this um, on uh, GitHub. I'll make the, the repository public, uh, and I'll put that out on social media with the hashtag uh, msbuild so that you can have a look at how you can build a complex application for Azure Static Web Apps and using tools that people as JavaScript developers are commonly using, you know, a front-end framework like React, a back-end like GraphQL. Thanks for signing in, and we're going to be back over to Sonia and Rick, uh, but let me just turn off the screen share so that we can see how they're doing.